<laughs> no less, did, did you see my comment where um, Rick fell asleep in the recliner on the, in the living room and one of his fairies buzzed in his ear? Yes. <laughs> one of his fairies, Max. Tell him, Rick. Yeah, Max, uh, he buzzed in my ear and I opened my eyes. He was right, right there, like 18 inches away from me. And he pointed to the bedroom like, I said, you want me to go to bed? And he goes, shakes his head, <laughs> yes. And, I, and, and, I, and then he pointed again and I said, okay, I'm going. <laughs> and that's the first time I've seen him that close up and that clear. Um, I was, he had a full beard. I was really surprised uh, to see him that clear. But that was pretty funny. Just pointed Beautiful. like, wow. I knew immediately what he went when he pointed. Get to bed. Get to bed. Yeah, <laughs> I said you have. I said you have downloads, and he goes. <laughs> Brilliant! I love it. <clears throat> Perfect. It's just what you needed, Rick. Just yeah. what you needed. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I got a pretty. I laugh pretty good too. <laughs> oh, I thought it was funny. It was yeah. A little <laughs> anecdote to start our day about how. Mm. How our fairies are, uh, yeah. fairies do give you downloads. <laughs> yeah. That was Max. That was Max. Uh, he's very close to me. He's yes. Just... Pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So, Phil, how would you like to start our morning uh, or your evening, my morning? <laughs> well, introduce, introduction or does everyone know us? I don't know. Well, uh, I'm, I'm Deb Purcell, this is Rick Purcell. We I, don't, are, we are I don't know you, Phil, so I think you should introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's Philip Barlow. Bar yeah. Barrow. Barlow. Barrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's no yeah. L in there, but I just yeah. speak funny. <laughs> there's Ronald in the middle, but we won't go there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah, speaks funny. He's from the UK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a factual of uh, Raphael. I've been an healer since I was four year old and I've got a lot of new methods to heal. So if you've got any questions, I do know there's a lot of questions that aren't on healing, but I don't mind trying to answer them as well. So uh, I'm also, I also do warrior work at night in Astra. Uh, so I don't mind any questions really within reason, I suppose. Apart from Nilesh's questions, okay. Tends to be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rick and I are, are um, Rick is connected to Source, um, and uh, I get the downloads. So uh, when I, he scans I, somebody, I get the downloads and actually see inside your body as Source is uh, healing you. I can t I'm, I speak on what is being healed in your body, and we also get a download of what your past lives are, any traumas from those past lives. We can see attachments, um, platforms. platforms, and uh, and we also channel uh, any information or who wants to bring forward any information for you. We've only been doing this for maybe two years, two, a year yeah, and a half, two, little, years. Little more, yeah, two and years. We're late bloomers. <laughs> we're in our 60s, and this is uh, the path that yeah, we're doing for the rest of our time here. And we are not fractals of anything I know of. <laughs> <laughs> We're just us. Um, Rick has been, his past life, he was Zeus and um, Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I was. I've never done myself. Oh, Athena. I was Athena yeah. and I don't know who else. You were my daughter. Yeah, I was your daughter. Deb, I found out this week I was James, so there you go. James, JC's brother. <laughs> oh, you were? <laughs> mm. So uh, that's what I found this week. That's not, uh, that's not surprising to me for you. Mm. Mm. Okay. So I wanted to destroy the town, but I couldn't. <laughs> he wouldn't let me. So. Shall we go for, for the questions? Sure. Sure. Yeah, Rhonda's, Rhonda's asked a question about how do you get back to your Earth uh, when you astro travel? Do you do a lot of astro traveling? 
Hey, hi everybody. Good to see hi, you. Rhonda. Hi, Rhonda. Hello. Um, so actually, so last night was really amazing. Um, I don't believe I, I was astral traveling. I truly believe that the guardians um, took me and I had a profound experience. It was just life. I mean, it was like right there. It was happening. It was amazing. Um, and uh, uh, so profound. And anyway, what, what all of this that, that took place last night, um, it was so funny because I had spent the night in, uh, in my trailer for the first time ever. And um, I, I had this uh, amazing sound that I heard. And um, it was, you know, it was like light language, but it was different and amazing. Anyway, it's, it, it kind of reminded me of, oh, I found her. Like, oh, here she is, right? So I guess they, the guardians found me and they took me because it was so it was white and beautiful and light and I could feel myself. So maybe it was astral, but yeah, anyway, it, it, it was, I, I was like, I went somewhere. Um, and it felt like um, it was an upgrade or maybe a download, something, whatever it was that I needed, what they were doing. And, um, so I, I got that, that I went somewhere and I have, you know, really, really vivid um, uh, memories of what happened. Uh, but what I don't know and what I can't place is how did I get back down here? How did I, um, what happened in order for them, in order for me to get here again this morning, last night, whatever we are still connected to it. the soul and body still connected even when you have stroke travel it's a bit like a mother cord it's still linked so you'll always come back uh i just think you probably did it yourself and you can't remember it's simple the thing is <laughs> the thing is when you astro travel at the first time it can be quite scary okay you don't, you won't you start getting worried how do we get back uh, okay. But all you have to do is think about getting back, and you'll get back. It's, it's, okay. It's, it's, I wasn't scared. I wasn't. I, I was just so, like, blissed out, man. You know, I don't know. It was just amazing. Yeah. Wow. And, wow. Moment. Yeah. It was great. I had no fear. It was like love for the beings that I saw, and um, just totally wonderful. So I don't know where that was. Uh, I had gotten a. Uh, where they had, where they were from, the first three beings I saw, they were from some place. Are I can't. Um, Riordia, Riordian, something not, like that. Not Orion, is it? No, I don't think it was Orion. I, I don't believe so. Um, anyway, it was just, it was fantastic, man. I, I was like. All right, this is awesome. I just didn't know how I got back to the physical. So, okay, but you're saying it was, you think it was more astral. Hmm. They have took you, but you, you've got to give permission and you, you, you've let yourself go to where they've took you. So you must have trusted them. Yeah. 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 How, how, how do you feel today? A lot different than yesterday. Um, happy. Hmm. Happy. Um, Elated, lighter, uh, um, a little, some tired, tired still. Like all day yesterday, I was just really tired and um, I went to bed early. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I went to bed way early, but I couldn't sleep because it was the first time, you know, new bed. And, um, but the sound that I heard was like, oh, hey, that's not from here it's from somewhere else and it was so distinct and i thought okay well cool they got me here i am you know let's go <laughs> so pretty amazing well i actually got there and i got you that you've been 
they've done a cleanse on you and you're going to do astral work. So uh, they've got a job for you. So they've got, okay. they, they were checking, checking if you're good or not, if you can do that job, they've cleansed you for it. And you'll probably do that more often now. So you're lucky you remember some of it. So. I remember a lot. Fabulous. Mm. Fabulous. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. And the, wherever it was that I went, the beings were very like human-like like human lives that I could see in front of me. Um, and what was there was very, I don't want to say it was dark, but it was, um, I, I mean, there, I could see there were drug addicts. There were people who were just down on their luck. There were, um, but there, on the other hand, there were people in business suits and, and, so crowded. I remember it was so crowded for some reason. Um, but uh, it, that, well, that's the first time that that experience has happened that I am aware of. So, hey, if I can do more of that, I'm all for it. If I can help and serve other beings and other life forms, I'm awesome. Perfect. That's what's supposed to happen. So yeah, I'm so excited. You're <laughs> probably you're probably helping the ones you were seeing. That's probably your job. You're going to be like a possibly like a spiritual nurse, and it helps fix the drug addicts and stuff like that. Ah, yeah. Hmm. That, that's that's what it sounds like to me. Hmm. So okay. Fix, fix the emotion or the emotions that people have in, in life. That's good. very good. Mm. Okay. I'm. That's very good. Okay. That's my new job, I suppose. I don't know. It's all good. I'll go for it. Mm. Thank you. You don't, Thank you. You, don't, you don't get paid for it, though. That's the only problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Money is, it's all good. You know, however it comes and flows. And it, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a minute one of those things. And um, I'm not worried. I think, I think you're tired because you've gone through it. A lot last night. They haven't just done a little bit. They've shown you what to do, and it's been a, a long night, basically. So you don't have much sleep. So right. Even more sleep. Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. Okay. Well, thank okay. you for that. I, I appreciate thank you. it. Okay. Next one's Cap, is it? Yeah, Cap is next. Victoria, um, Victoria had a question on the side. Are we going just um? How did you want to do this, Phil? Uh, I don't know. I know Kath was the next one. Okay. Go ahead, Kath. Uh, we've got plenty of time. About uh, brain fog. You've got to demute yourself. Hi, Phil. How are you doing? All right. Hi, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, basically, I, um, I came across a medical medium yesterday. I don't know quite much about him yet but I have been struggling with brain fog quite a lot this last year and I don't know if that's a phenomenon that's around everybody at the minute or whether that's you know with the energy is coming through or if there's anything I can do to alleviate that really and if anybody else here was experiencing that that's kind of what I wanted to know. What do you mean by brain fog? Um, I can wake up with my mind really clear and, and remembering things quite easily and then um, I can have a couple of hours when it's just like it almost feels, I can imagine like, you know, when the SAS and they give them tasks, a simple task to do and they're deprived of oxygen and they, and they have to really focus on it. Um, that's kind of how it feels a bit. And then a couple of hours later, it's clear again. And then I have another episode of that. And, and I seem to be most clear in the middle of the night. Um, and my clarity is really clear then. Um, so, and I had read on this medical medium that, that is something that others are dealing with. And I wasn't sure if you might have come across it or if anybody else is dealing with that. Do you have a lot of emotions going on at the moment in your life? Um, mm, no more than usual. And usually, most stuff I can deal with. So yeah, that's mm. not, I don't think it's that. It's, it's been longer than just a few weeks. You know, it's been probably months it's been happening, but it, it's just crept upon me really. But it's not, um, 
it's not a medical issue. I almost feel it's like a, I don't know if it's an energy, I don't know, basically, I'm investigating it, but what, is, it what the is, it, is it negative? Do you feel it's negative? No, no, it's just frustrating because I, simple things that I, I kind of like, um, <laughs> so even now I'm struggling to speak, aren't I? Um, it's like fog. That's all I can describe it as. It's it's like you can be having a conversation or you're doing something and people go, don't you remember when I said, and I go, I genuinely don't. And it's not any disrespect to them or any, or lack of interest. It's just, anyway, never mind. I'll, I'll continue. Uh, I think it's linked, I think it's linked possibly to alkaline in the body and, um, um, with me for years i know exactly what you're talking about do you deb and how, how did you, you know, deal with exactly. that exactly it, it's i'm it's almost like you go into this fog you've lost yeah. you can't even remember you're sitting there having a conversation with them and then all of a sudden you nothing they said has made sense it's like <laughs> but i'll get to the end of the day and i go what have i done today and i go yes. oh. <laughs> and and it, it frustrates me because there's a lot I want to do, basically. Um, and I, I feel stupid when people say, don't you remember when you said, and I genuinely have no memory of what they I said. Exactly what you're talking um, about. And I, 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 when I, I, it came in my newsfeed last night and I was like, because I, re I thought, God, it's just me, there's something going on here. But yeah. apparently it's happening across the world. Um, and I didn't know about it. So I just, anyway, never mind, guys. It was just a, a discussion. Uh, what what I would do, what I would do, uh, this is what I do with headaches. I put your two hands on your head, on this part here, and try okay. and try and uh, send it to your hands and try and pull it out into your healing hands and just just pull it out of your your head and then send in uh, uh, send in gold source energy from your crown chakra to pull it out and then okay. and then while you're doing it, tell your brain to sort 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 all this fog out actually send a signal so actually take over your brain and send a signal from your your psychic part of your head so sort this fog out and send it out of your hands gold source energy or even violet flame through into your crown chakra and just pull it out try that try that. what ground it then do i ground it phil do yeah I then touch it to the ground yeah yeah you can ground it you can have a put in there or ground it with a, an answer say hello Oh, uh, right. circle around your head and just just push it down to ground and then use moon energy uh, afterwards to uh, okay, cleanse thank it. You very much. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Okay. Next one. I'm not sure who's the next one. Deb, do you know who's next? I think Deb said Victoria, didn't you, Deb? No, Victor we've talked to Victoria. Yes. Or well, does Victoria have anything else to say? She wanted to know if it was okay if um, we spoke, are we allowed to talk about ET encounters? ET is we, an AI. Are we allowed to track them? No. Discuss this kind of topic. Because yeah. I've yeah. never seen people it's talk fine. about it on YouTube like this. It's fine. Fine? Yeah, I, I was actually doing grid work last night, so I'm a bit tired now. <laughs> so I haven't had much <laughs> sleep. But yeah, it's fine. It's fine. What, yeah. Um, okay, um, since we're all heading towards a, a higher evolution, I, you know, we're seeing more, experiencing more, and with the Galactic Federation, we need to move into the next phase, and, you know, which is, you know, ET contact and, you know, other beings and stuff like that, so I just thought that maybe, you know, people could share more about the their experiences and there's one um, encounter that I want to share with you guys which is very interesting um, but I don't know if anyone else is having these experiences like I am Go on, then. okay um, there is this one time I woke up with a, an AI bot on my chest it's a spider bot it has all different uh, limbs for different shapes and they're basically tools. It, the one I saw was a, it, the body was like an, an alarm clock. It's round and 
the, the legs are just different. They're not like a spider, but it's like a spider or a crab log, you know, type of thing. And it, it sat on my chest. I woke up to it and it looked at me and I looked at it and it was like, it saw me and then quickly cloaked itself, but I could still see it even if it's cloaked and it's dark because I can see the energy around it. Um, so it didn't move or anything like that. And I'm thinking in my head, well, you are hiding from me. What are you doing here? How come you're not leaving? And, you know, I'm just you know, thinking this. And so I'm still looking at it and it's still there. And I close my eyes, open it again, and it's still there. But I don't get a feeling that they are negative. At least on my on my part, and um, I understand that there are positive AI and there's also non-positive. I also understand that I I also know that there are AI bots watching. Yeah, one aspect of it is protecting me. But I was wondering if. Um, If anyone knows what this bot is doing, what this AI being is doing, or if anyone else has experience with these AI beings. I just don't feel that it was you know, doing any harm for me because you know, could have left, didn't have to hide. But I also am aware that I have one watching me as one of my guardians and, and having my, my guardians allow this being so close to me, this being cannot be negative, if you know what I mean. Wow. Or, or is it negative? But, uh, so, some of the people here won't resonate about the galactics yeah. in this. So yes. what I'm saying, if it doesn't resonate with you, just ignore it. Because I do, I, I do, I do work on a ship there at night in Astra. Yeah. So I, I have a, I have a feeling it's to protect you because you must do galactic work and probably in the uh, galactic. Uh, Federation actually the building, so they're probably there to protect you because obviously there's a little war going on that people don't know about, and I think it's to do with that. You're just getting protected. Uh, if you think it's part, but what I would do is just signal in your head and say, and send them a message that you are, you have got one around, and they'll check it out anyway. Yeah, I I already know that they sent it, and I have these spaceships that come by my house every day and they come in all different directions. I actually see them. And when I want to walk my dog, Amazing. they they follow me. Mm. You must be well protected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in ways I, I I I don't have fear. I don't have fear going out in places. And um, all thanks to knowing that when I connected with them telepathy, telepathy, they they responded. And I think they, a lot a lot so, of people don't realize that when we go to sleep, we have got another job as well. That's why we go to sleep, basically. I, I know that um, one of my one of my jobs here is in the astral. I've seen it that when I want to sleep, I have to del deliver light codes. There's a, mm. a, a classroom with teachers, um, someone teaching some other souls, mm. part of the federation or part of the initiation, one of the schools and stuff. And I will come in and I will deliver a code for them. To, to work with, and they had to um, use that code and teach mankind. So I'm one of the teachers and also, you know, I see some of the stuff I do. So I, I'm aware of some of the stuff I do in the astral. Me and a, a bloke called David was actually showing souls what to do a few days ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was quite strange that you just said that, so, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I just, um, I feel very strongly about us moving forward to become the uh, 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 Nova Galacticans, if you know what I mean. So um, maybe it's just what I'm, what I'm being uh, guided to do is to bring up this topic for people not to fear, not to fear the ET families, not to fear um, the contacts because, you know, this is the next stage of humanity and evolution is telepathy. And this is where we're heading. Okay. Well, thank you for that. All right. 
I have no question. But thank you for letting me share this. It's fine. It's good to share. Okay, I am Bobby, Bobby Alanis. She has a question. So I know I have an important mission <clears throat> in this life and I have always struggled to be on my truth path. I've been stricken in my physical body with many, many illnesses. I've lived a very tragic life since the young age of four years old and I am now 45. I've asked source why I put through all those tragedies and I was told because I do have the heart of source and I, have a I am a daughter of source. It is I who is, who, is, who is to lead the lost and broken and to help heal them. But why have I struggled so much to be this? And I was told I was to be question mark. I think, I, I think it's actually experiences of who you're going to help. I think it's like a, a training, which is very, very wrong. But you've got to, you, you'll be helping them and you've got the experience behind you to actually help them. Um, does, that, does that make sense? Do you recognize her at all, Phil? No. <laughs> no. She's from the angelic realm. You're an angel, okay. Bobby. You chose this path. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I always wondered where I aligned at. And I feel very strongly pulled to a lot of the messages as I was talking about earlier with Alba and when I watched a lot of those uh, messages that were being brought forward um, I felt a lot of connection with like I I don't know I just know that I am not doing what I'm supposed to be doing fully and I don't know why I'm being held back so much um, the only one holding back is you. Well, and that's where I was looking, learning those things as well. Um, I, I have this huge heart of compassion and I want to help everyone. I want, you know, my whole slogan to, for myself is it's all about the love, you know, and I've always said that for many years. And um, I know that I've went through different things to learn lessons to understand. And I, at times I feel like because I am supposed to be doing something. There are things placed in my way to prevent me from doing that, um, that are outside sources. Um, mm -hmm. But I've always been able to prevail through that. Um, but I feel like a lot of times they've limited, and not just myself, but the outside sources has limited my abilities at times and has tried to weaken me to make me fear or to make me um, not believe in all of who I am. And I really feel, feel strongly that I am supposed to be following this path and it's more prominent now than ever. And so many times I attempt to do it, all these things are put in my path to have these obstacles to go forward. And, and quite frankly, I'm frustrated at that because I just want to do what I know that in my heart I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm always fighting, um, it seems like, to get to that point. And so I don't know what I need to do to overcome all that just so I can be and do what I'm supposed to do. You've got, you got to pass the test. When I was seven, I used to get attacked by demons uh, most nights. And eventually, I, I had a little alarm system in the back of the neck. Uh, but send it, in the end, I used to be able to ground them or send them to the light. They weren't demons. That was my test to see if I could do warrior work, to see if I had any fear on them. I had no fear. So I was past it. every time you pass the test, you go further and further to your goal. I also think you're connected to Ariel, by the way. Is it Ariel? I think so. So... Uh, yeah, you've got to pass them test. Hmm? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not fearful of that. I actually work with people in regards to that because I'm able to see those attachments on people, um, what other people cannot see. Um, there's been many that came into my life, but because they couldn't attach to me, they attached to people around me and th that were significant in my life. Um, did, you, did you try and get rid of it? Uh, I had. Um, and then at one point in time, I had to just unfortunately walk away from that 
person because they were so uh, inviting of that of that energy that it, no matter what I was trying to do, it wasn't going to matter until they were ready. So I understood that as well. So I was spending a lot of my energy trying to help them release that, but then in reality, they were so intertwined and they weren't ready to do it. So they just kept inviting it back and it was just depleting my energy. Does, so does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I spell, I'll help you to go forward. Just say, can, can you give us a bit of guidance here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I which, always, go ahead. Which, which angel do you talk to? I don't know. I, I, I don't. <laughs> I know I have a, like, I cannot get that connection. I do have, um, I do have a light being of, and I said that was my angel, but I wasn't quite sure, but I do have a white hawk and her name's Angelica. And she said she is my seeker to seek out all those that need my help and guidance and to protect me as well. But um, she was from the angelic realm. So of course she would be with me. She told me, um, but she never, I never knew that part of me, of, of who I'm fully connected with, because I feel like I'm so connected with source directly that I don't know those fractal, outside fractal parts of me too. Mm -hmm. uh, try asking her. Oh, I, I, would, I would connect with Ariel. I think I think I got the right name. Because uh, that's what was coming to me when you were talking about. Yeah. Okay. It's just it's just tests. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've had plenty of tests, and that's what I keep mm. telling myself too. Like everything that I've been through, um, you know, I, I've shared my story only a few times with very select few people, and they look at me and they're like, "How are you still here physically? Like literally, like how are you still here? Like how did you even make it through everything that you've been through and everything that you experienced?" And um, you know, I'm like, I. I have no choice. I have to just keep going. And in that sense, I feel type of like warrior-ish <laughs> type mentality to keep, you know, pushing through to, to, to help the, the cause and the reason of, of why we're here for the healing and the love and the, and the change and the ascensions. And, you know, um, I really feel connected with, you know, Gaia and it's, it's a lot, you know, to, just really start to embrace all this and just know that this is my driving force that I really need to push forward for. And I'm excited to do it, but I don't want to be doing it hastily and not in the right ways. So as I was explaining One earlier, you is start trusting yourself and your knowing um, and not, not getting your head and, and start talking yourself out of this. The experiences and illnesses you ask to experience illnesses are things because it, you being an angel, you wanted to experience some of the human aspects. The illnesses are the ones that, the, that you want to experience. So, who's got the puppy dog? <laughs> Could you mute yourself, please? Thank you. <laughs> um, I... I'm asking creator, we're all connected to source, every single one of us with every breath we take that we're, we're connected to source energy. Um, when I say that Rick is connected, he's connected for healing. Source came to him and healed him. He came, the white light came in physical, I mean, physicality and connected to him and healed him and, and um, gave him the energy to, to do healing. And then I, you know, when I started getting, uh, when Rick would call me from work and say, my friend's wife or my friend's husband isn't feeling well. All of a sudden I would get the diagnosis. This is before we even realized that he was getting, he was a healer. I, I didn't know where this information was coming from. I have no medical background at all. And, you know, this is when I kind of contact, I contacted a friend of ours who's a channeler because at the time I didn't know anything about channeling. I didn't know I was chan a channeler. I, you know, these things were all just happening over a period of, uh, three or four months in, in so I mean we were getting all these this information and I was I mean he would come into the room and I, I'd be burning up don't come near me I don't know what's wrong with you I'm getting hot you know I didn't get it I did just the things weren't making sense to me um, why he he would walk in a room and I I, I mean 
it was like the sun walking in the room. I was boiling hot. Um, and why Metatron was suddenly, after I saw a video of, of Nilesh and all of a sudden Metatron's visiting me, uh, things like that were happening to me. So um, when, you, when you start getting information and you start seeing orbs and you start seeing all these things, it, there's reasons for it. Trust your knowing, trust in here, your heart, not here. And, and I, I appreciate that so much because I have trusted within myself and it is all that outside talk that gets in my head. And I'm like, well, you know, like, could it be just, you know, in my head? And I'm like, but it doesn't feel right because it feels right in my heart, you know, and I have been given, um, you know, abilities to connect and to see energy and to, you know, read energy and to work with energy and to, you know, all these things, you know, I've, I've been connected with and had this ability and I've been given visions and precognitive dreams and things like that. So for me, I, you know, I, I feel like when I talk about this or I share it, um, because I'm trying to plant those seeds as, as well to others to help awaken them, um, you know, I'm just looked at like, who are you? You're nobody to tell me these things, you know, so it's really hard. Move on, Move on because you have, to, yeah. you have to, I had to do the same thing. We all have to, even with our own children and our family members, you have to let them and honor their path because there's nothing you can do. We are the last person they're going to listen to. It's going to be a stranger that's going to wake them up. It's not going to be their family. Right. right. They will listen to a stranger before they'll listen to us. Yeah. Stranger. Isn't that odd? <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you meditate a lot? You do a lot um, of meditation. You know, um, I started to, and then I wasn't able to because every time I go into a meditation, it's like I, I feel like I'm pulling in and attracting like a lot of outside uh, beings. So um, even by putting a shield up, they're still there and they're distracting me. So I feel like in my space that I'm in right now, I don't have that ability to do it effectively like I would like to. Try I doing do, more. Try I doing do more. Decrees. Mm. I, I don't meditate. I do decrees. I do, I, I do prayers that are called decrees that um, uh, uh, one of my spiritual teachers, uh, her name's Christine Preston. I do those and um, I do them every day and for over an hour. Have you thought about communicating with the beings? Uh, the ones that are trying to come in? actually talk to them. Oh, the, you mean the ones that are trying to come in mm. while I try to meditate? Um, I had it. Um, there had been the last time I tried to meditate. Um, I actually told him, I said, stop, I need to go into meditation. So please leave me alone for right now. But um, I was trying to set boundaries so I could meditate for a different purpose. Um, and I didn't, I didn't invite them in. I, I didn't want to invite them in unless I knew it was safe and I felt like they were intruding at that time. So that's why I didn't try, but it could just be, I don't know. I don't really have fear. You know, I, I have a, a desire to want to connect and to, to get the information. It's almost as if when I hear other people speak, it, it's just like reigniting that knowledge within myself that I already knew these things or I've talked to myself about it. And then of course somebody else is saying it and then I'm like, okay, see, okay, good. You know, we're on the same page type thing. So, um, you, you can refuse permission for them to come in, but you can still talk to them because they might be giving you a message. It might be part of your learning. You won't know that. So you start talking to them. True. Uh, I would do that. The other thing is, you've had a lot of illness over the years. Have you ever thought of? Uh, have you ever tried self healing? You know, I have. Um, well, first, I because I knew it was, I I have the knowing that it was in the food also that I was ingesting. So I switched over to um, a vegan lifestyle, and I am trying to not take any chemical medications at all that they always want to prescribe to me. So I knew that started with that, with getting everything out of my system. So then I could reconnect um, and start to do the self healing because I felt a lot of things were blocked from the um, chemicals and stuff that was in the food I was, I was taking in. So um, I made that choice uh, a year ago in November and then so I'm on that journey, but, um, also when I just had Elba Wyman's, um, uh, frequency tuning just this past Tuesday, and I was able during that session, I was able to go in and talk to my body at that time clearly 
and try to release because I felt like I had a couple of attachments trying to hold on to me um, and grab a hold. So I could feel them like pushing out of me, but I was telling my body to remove that from my body. And I was able to speak clearly to that more effectively. Right. Next time you prepare food, you've got the food ready, mm -hmm. hold your hand out in a bowl, ask the universe for the ingredients to fix your body. Also send love into it, which is the best moment you've ever had in your life. Put it in there, visualize it in there and sprinkle it on the meal. You do that every day. Okay. Yeah. So it's a bit like you're adding something to your food, which is your, to actually fix what's wrong with your body. So whatever you think's wrong with your body, add it into your energy ball. Uh, you can add gold source energy in there as well by visualization and then just sprinkle it on the food. I send uh, love energy. What I do is I think of like, say when my child was born and the mm -hmm. first time out, and I, I have the memories in my hand and then I send it into, I send the energy into the, into me and in my hand and I sprinkle it on my food. And uh, you've got nothing to learn, but, uh, lose by that, but you've got everything to gain. And also ask the universe to send the ingredients to help your physical body. Okay. Yeah, I will think I've heard that before too. So, and I was like, should I try this? <laughs> but I thought oh, yeah. by me, uh, well, I thought by removing all these other things and just going to that plant-based organic that it would help a lot. And it has, don't get me wrong, it has, but it's just not quite there so i appreciate that very much uh, send the love energy in and send a, a universe signature to fix your body as well yeah it's okay going organic but you it's got a, it's got a, them building blocks to fix you as well yeah right right okay well thank you i appreciate that too mm -hmm. sorry for taking up all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah every day i i actually do that every day so Especially because I eat meat, so I need to do it because it's low vibration. <laughs> so. I will be going back to meditating now that the hundred the hundred degrees, I think what it's forty eight Celsius for you guys, um, is going away. I live in the desert of Arizona, so I will be going back outside. <laughs> I want to come visit you. I want to go to Sedona. <laughs> oh, we're not far from Sedona, about two hours. Nice, nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, and the next question is uh, Thank you. Celia. Hi, Celia. Welcome. Good to see you. Uh, patience is not one of uh, her virtues. It seems that what she is expecting to happen in getting her healing gift activated is not happening soon enough. Is there a message for her or some advice for her to make things happen quicker, I'm assuming? I mean, you were, you, you've done healing. So the last time we were together, uh, Source had come through for you and said that you are already a healer. You had healed people in your family, if I remember correctly. Yes, but that's it. Okay. Um, everything else doesn't seem to come through. I don't know if... I am distracted. I, um, I have been religiously um, trying to internalize the, the, the discourses. For some reason, I'm being drawn to that um, set of discourses every time I, you know, I'm trying to look for something else to uh, to read or to meditate on, but I'm being drawn to that. So um, a couple of days ago, I, I just said, I'm going to just, you know, internalize the whole discourses and see if uh, that's what the, uh, it's being asked of me. So I'm, I'm trying to follow different suggestions and how you activate your um, your gift you know whatever but it's not I, I mean Saint Germain said you know um, expect um, that the ascended masters that you want to meet manifest to you now and ask them to do that um, I've been trying to and I nothing 
Okay, I've got the father coming through, and he's saying, if I've already said to you that you're a healer, why are you denying? What, what more do you want? <laughs> it's not that I'm denying. It's just that when I, when I try to do it, um, um, even if, I mean, let's just say I, I tried to heal like my mom. Um, she's 96. Her hearing is kind of going. So I was trying to do some um, healing for her. But it seems like it's getting worse. What, what healing do you do on her? How do you I, heal her? I'm sorry? How do you actually heal? Try, how do you actually try and reverse the hearing problem? How do I do it? Yeah. Um, I follow the the suggestions of Saint Germain that I invoke the I am presence and and um, ask that um, the same presence be be sent to this person to my mom and to um, have a perfect health and that all the things that are unlike thee be uh, gone now and forever and I just that's okay. what I do I, I'm saying if you are the if you are the healer if you've got the healing energy you just picture her her ears just picture the inside of her ears being healed picture, picture you picture the green the emerald green energy in their ears we, we all do it we all do it differently but as Deb said you're not concentrating on what needs healing you're trying to heal all the body where it's just the healing how I would do it I'd try and flush it with energy I'd try and clear it with flush it with energy try and think around the box think what's actually wrong with that ears and then concentrate on that part so if you what's actually wrong with the ears it's just uh, it's going it yeah well well, um, six months ago, she completely lost hearing on one ear. Well, the right ear is already gone. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's very faint. You can hear. And then the left ear, which is the, the best ear, she lost her hearing on that completely. And then when, uh, because we were, were also practicing holistic, um, you know, healing, prior to me being introduced to this um, platform. And uh, we, we gave her the um, um, supplements that we thought would help her. And within two weeks that she was um, doing this uh, natural supplements, she got it back completely. And so, so after that, when that was, uh, I think, March of this year, and then in June or July, that was when I was um, uh, introduced to this platform, and and um, we noticed that it's going again, even if her supplements are still being uh, yeah. administered to her. So, um, so I was trying to um, see that the I am presence be present in, in the supplements that, that will help her, um, uh, you know, with, with her condition. And it seems like, you know, her hearing is getting worse. So I, I've, I've just been told something and I've never, I've, I've never done this before. So I don't know if it'll work. Manifest a spiritual speaker in the bad, bad ear. Actually put your hands when you're healing. Uh, bring in any source energy or probably starlit seed energy into it, but then in your mind, manifest two uh, spiritual speakers in the ear. I've never been, I've, I've just got that then. Uh, so that'd be an interesting one. I'll, I'll try that myself on the next person. But I would try try around the box, try something different. But uh, I, I wouldn't, I, I'd try and use your own hands. When you people heal, heal, 
I mean, it's normally back of, just above the input of the psychic about the back of the head. There's a little thing in the brain that sends the healing to your healing hand. And it can be quite, uh, because we haven't done it for thousands of years, it can be quite rusty. But try and, try and channel it through your nervous system, the energy going into your hands, and then try and visualize a uh, spiritual speaker to increase the volume of the ears. Mm. So you're actually, in, in, you're actually creating a, like a, in a way, like attachment for these speakers. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I know okay, it sounds, I will... sounds weird. It sounds weird, but you haven't got anything to lose. Hey, you know, just like you said, think outside the box. Yeah. Okay. I was saying, please don't doubt that you ha are a healer. That you are the healer. So you don't need to invoke anybody. You are. You have the gift. You are the one that's healing. It's through you that it has the energy. The energy is coming through you. Yeah, doubts create blockages. By the way, in healing, yeah. if you have a doubt, you create a blockage. So right. don't have any doubts. Just look for all the doubts away. So can I say something about that too? Mm -hmm. So um, what I was just getting was that um, don't. Don't think, don't try, do it. So when you're healing, you're healing. You already have the gift. And so just use your gift and know that it's happening. But the other thing too is that the person receiving it also has to believe in you. So there could be some, you know, hey, this is my kid and she never healed me before. Or you know what I mean? Like she never did heal me before. And so there, there may be a little bit of doubt. So, so put the intent. So the intent has to be there. So I think I think just like um, they were saying, you are the power, you are the source because you are source, right? You are source in this life and you embody source. So, um, and so when you bring your own power in, it's you, it, it's your power. You're not just you in this 3D body, it's you in the astral, right? It's you with the etheric person that you are. And we're huge, we're, I mean, we're big, we create planets. So just imagine size, right? So if you can just imagine size and think of yourself as your, your astral body, your larger self, and then use that energy and then know that that energy is coming through you as you're doing healing. So, um, so that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, yeah, you. One, Thank you. One more, one more thing. What Wendy said then, ask your mother to accept it, because she might be blocking it. If she accepts it, it's very more difficult. Even if she doesn't believe in it, if she accepts you heal, it, the healing from you, it's harder for, to block the actual healing. Yeah, because we we have shields, we have aura shields that as a self defense, and it might be just blocking you, and she just needs to let's say give you permission. Yeah. Okay. Can I um, also add here, I've been working with the medicine. Um, you, can okay. visualize, you can visualize a... Reinhardt's question is... Yeah, it, the Victoria is speaking, but we can't oh, hear. I can't hear. Um, Victoria, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were speaking. We can't hear you. You can visualize a little tiny medicine Buddha, which is maybe four inches or so. Just a little Buddha. Uh, however, but just visualize him in your mother's ear or wherever that she needs healing. And you just do a, you know, you pray and you can invoke him and do a, a, the a mantra for the medicine Buddha. And likely, likely it will, it will clear up something. Because uh, for me, the medicine Buddha always answers. So I don't see a reason why. Okay. Yeah. The other, Thank you. The, another thing, you could actually uh, create a, a, a pill to do ears, and it, it's a bit like manifesting like the energy ball, but in a pill format, and then give, give it a, in a, a meal, and uh, do it that way. That's a, another way. But you've got to add the ingredients that you think it actually sort the earring problem out. So you've got about four or five, four or five methods there. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, I'll be busy. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, Reinhardt um, would like to know if. Um, where did I lose him? No, I'm, let me let me explain. Um, we okay. were talking about the astral realm, and there was said that everybody is in there during the night, and 
many years, I don't have dreams and I don't remember anything. I wake up and then I'm up and I go, I go to sleep without any, any bothering. You know, there's nothing there which would, uh, um, yeah, I, I don't have fear. And because it's like this, that's okay. Um, my um, question would have been um, if, when you look at my, um, yeah, what I what I have here, in if if you can see if I'm there somewhere or not. That's all. Is that an astro? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Sometimes when I was younger, went to, to experience experience astro. As I went to bed, I'd try and visualize where I want to go. And I'd, I'd actually uh, visualize, say, going to a certain mountain. Right, so uh -huh. I'm visualizing it, I'm visualizing it. Eventually, it starts becoming real. And over time, that visualization becomes astro. Because you, you, when, I, when I was dead, dead young, I wanted to do astro that much when I was a child. And I realized then, don't just do astro, pretend to do astro. And eventually, the astro comes. Yeah, most yeah. people do astro at night. So, so visualize your favorite place to go every night, and just say, "Right, I'm going there," and just visualize it in your head how you travel through the trees or through whatever, and you land at the place and do it again and again, and eventually your body starts actually doing it. I but understand. Again, it depends if you actually do astro, but you, that's how I used to pick it up when I was a child. Yeah, Phil, I understand. The question was. Are you able, or is it possible, if you see a person, would you see information that he does, the astral walking or whatever he does during his uh, night sleep, or is it not possible? You might pick up the energy part. You pick up the energy if you're mm -hmm. an astral. Yeah. So you, yeah, you can, but it's it's an energy thing. If you know what I mean. So uh, it's not been possible to tell me if I am or not, but it just it was a, just a question, you know. I was wondering, mm. but it, mm. it it doesn't bother me much because uh, I know that we get rising frequencies and there there will be more and more activity, and at some time it's just natural. Um, so it's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Wendy, your question is, do you, do you know why people struggle with high blood pressure? Are they experiencing the call to healthy living for ascension, stay or go? Is that for me? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's my, it is for you because it seems like there's a lot of people around me that, that struggle with weight to begin with but that high blood pressure just seems to be something that keeps coming up to like people i know like end up in the hospital and so i'm kind of wondering like what's up with the systems is that kind of like is that kind of like the calling card to say hey like clean up your act because the ascension's happening and if you're not ready you're not ready so i don't know so i was My just looking for additional insight to that <laughs> Yeah, my personal view is uh, the brain is set, uh, it's got a mindset on a certain system and the ascension is bringing new energies and that mindset's not allowing for the new energies. So the brain is not catching up. So it's getting high blood pressure. It, it's the, the mind, uh, the, the brain of the person needs resetting really, like rebooting. Even you can do it yourself or you can do it. But uh, it, I'd say most of it is to do with the uh, mindset of the person linked, connected to the new energies. They can't handle the different frequency. So that, does that help? Yeah, that's interesting. And, um, and actually, one of the people that just went to the hospital, I, he had fallen and had gotten hurt. And I said, well, I can kill that so that you can at least bend over and move. And so I only spent a couple minutes with him. And then he's like, oh my God, I can touch my toes again because it was such a 
bad fall. <laughs> and he, and he goes, but he said to me, even before he, before he started, he said, but I don't believe it. He said, but I'm, I'm willing. So he accepted it, even though he was thinking, well, this isn't going to work. And then he's like, I can touch my toe. So he was, then he got excited about it. And then the next day he ended up in the ER with problems. And I, I know I just kind of did like a white box clearing of his energy. So maybe that was, maybe that was, I don't know. I just found it curious. And then, but then I was wondering, because it seems like a lot of people have been going and having that same experience recently. So yeah. A, lot, a few times, and this can be the uh, with your mother with the bad ears. Sometimes I actually send signals to the brain and tell the brain, you're not quite doing your job correctly. You need to do this. So if you're healing the person, you can try and reboot, put programs in the brain to say, look, your, your job, a brain can fix anything in your body, absolutely anything, only if it knows, and it just needs to be told sometimes. So when, I, when I've been doing that healing for the last 20 years, two nights a week, I sometimes, I don't tell them, I, I sometimes uh, tell the brain. And I also do a key number, which is a frequency key number. So that comes yeah. in. And that's a bit like Dave Starr's key numbers, but I've been doing that for about 20 years. <laughs> but I, mean, I, I can't believe he said it. So I, I give it a key number and I tell the brain, look, you're not doing your job. You need to do this. And I so can you? Hmm? So can you tell the person that they can do that themselves? Because if they're already like not thinking about it, can you do it telepathically? Can you like maybe I can just tell mm. them telepathically from my mind to their mind? All right, you need to fix yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to take over your brain and tell it it's not doing right. Yeah, I think you can. Depends on who the person is though, because a lot of people block it. So, but I think it's worth trying. It's worth trying that. Yeah. I like that idea of a key. It's almost like um, it's almost like a, like you have a key and you assign it a task. Almost like how you assign your crystals, and then that mm. that virtual key could then be used to like an on-off switch. The the key is a frequency code. Okay. To to do that job. Okay. I bet no right, cool. that before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. I like it. I like mm. it. All right, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, Sue and Dave have a question. Um, they've been experiencing hives rash on her eyes, face, arms, legs, etc., for over a week now. She did a course of prednisone for a week, which is a steroid. Got got a by, uh, by a doctor visit, which ended this last Wednesday. The rash on her eyes and face seemed to have gotten worse again, but the other parts of her body is getting better. She's tried doing Kundalini Reiki, Reiki on herself, and received other galactic healing infusions, but is still hanging on. What else can I do to try and make, clear it up? Sue. Oh, Sue. <laughs> or Susan. Susan, it's oh, Sue and Dave now. <laughs> hmm. Have you seen anyone medically? Have they said anything about it? She said she went on prednisone, so yeah, that's last Friday, uh, prescription. Online virtual doctor's visit, and they sent a prescription to my pharmacy, and I was able to fill it. So, which helped a little bit. It helped a little bit with the inflammation and stuff like that, but then. Um, I used it all up by Wednesday morning, and since then it seems like the eyes are bad. They're really red and swollen and, and rash all over my cheeks and everything. Um, and so I'm trying You've got poison ivy. Adjusted things, huh? You've got poison ivy. Poison ivy? For poison oak. That's the creator's telling me. Okay. What what I would do? Uh, put your hand out. Yeah, I had a, I had a psychic friend say that I I drove through an area that had like a pollen, kind of like a. Uh, no, somebody was burning it. Oh, somebody was burning it. That's why it's so bad in your eyes. Yeah, my eyes are like bloodshot red, and 
Pull Somebody was burning it. You need Benadryl. I've been taking Benadryl every day, usually at night, but sometimes yeah. during the day. I took some this morning. It just has to work itself out. Uh, yeah, you're. Oh God, I had the same thing happen to me when I was when I was. Um, oh my God, I had the same exact thing happen to me. They were burning it, and I'm everybody. I was so allergic. No, nobody else got it but me. All over my face, all over my arms. Yeah, the rash on my arms is pretty much faded and almost gone. And somebody was burning it, and that's why you got it in your face, and your arms, and your eyes. Ugh. Yeah, I've tried. I've tried putting aloe, like like pure alo, organic aloe vera. I got Probably, some. um the uh, allergy eye drops. You can get them yeah. over. <laughs> Not working. Sure. Oh. Cream, which because I have eczema that I've had since I was a kid, and so I try and use her cream, which okay, well, let's do, let's do it. Let's do a healing. Let's do it. Let's do a healing. Oh, it's definitely it's poison oak. Father said it's poison oak. They were burning it. I don't think they realized when they were trimming trees that they were burning it too. Or trimming whatever they were trimming. Was somebody burning something in your neighborhood? Hi, Dave. Um I may I may have one day it smelled a little burning. That's because that's He's showing me it was um, poison oak. Or if I drove through an area that where somebody was doing it. Okay. I was saying he's putting some numbing stuff in your eyes so it stops the itching. Okay, this should be gone in a day and a half, Susan. Thank you. Water, water, water. I feel for you. I know what it's like. Ugh. I was miserable. It took me weeks to get rid of it. Like tea tree or oil or anything. I know I've used that for poison. I um, before, but I don't know about my face. What the? No, it was. I that was that cow that pink stuff I used. That was the only thing. Calamine lotion or something like that. That was the only thing that I was able to use the whole time. Okay. They, didn't, they didn't give me a steroid. Nothing back then. Okay. It was. I mean, it was weeks, and I think they gave me nothing for my eyes. I was just miserable for weeks. Yeah. I look like I had demon eyes with my. I, I looked. I looked. I looked, I was a mess. <laughs> Can I suggest something? She's like, well, maybe you have like scarlet fever because that's going around. I'm like, I don't think that's no, it. No, it's not. <laughs> Go ahead, Celia. <laughs> uh, normally what I use is uh, sovereign silver, which is a, it's like colloidal silver. It always works for me. Uh, poison oak, uh, eczema, uh, anything. On, your, on the skin? I, I spray it in my eyes too when it's itching and um, it, it works. So you just spray it on where where it's um, it's a uh, you know like um, inflammation like yeah. Okay. It always works for me. Yeah. Can I, can I tell you my idea? 
Would that be okay, Susan? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Yes. In your hand, by visualization and manifesting a cream, bring in the energies that you need mm -hmm. to fix you by asking the universe, but also the creams that you, the, the methods you've been using now, ask for the energy part in the cream. Then ask, then bring in, right, this is through meditation as well. So you meditate and you visualize this cream. You touch stirring, you can feel it in your hand, stirring it, and visualize violet flame to transmute what's creating this problem. And then just pour it over your face into where it's sore. And if you really want to go with the old log, you can actually also create a tablet, ask the universe for the ingredients, uh, roll it, roll it, and put it in your mouth, and actually get some physical water and drink the tablet. And just do that every day. Okay. So that's, just, that's my spiritual method. That I've been told. So. Okay, I'll uh, try that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. See how much you learn here, everybody. <laughs> You've got five ideas, though. <laughs> so let's try. So. Everyone. Okay. Let's see. Oh, Bobby, my spiritual teacher, she's on Facebook. Um, she's not anywhere else, but her name is P Christine Preston. And it has a, a black and white picture on her Facebook page of her and her twin flame who is, who died in the 1960s. And he's her cousin who is now an Andromedan on a ship above us. He's already ascended. Okay, but she and she's in UK. And um, and Phil, you said you were seeing Ariel or Uriel? It's Uriel. You said right, <laughs> Uriel, Archangel Uriel. Uriel. Is she a, a fractal of Uriel? Is that yeah. what you were telling her? Yeah, you're a fractal of Archangel Uriel, and that's why I said, do you recognize her? Yeah. <laughs> Ariel. <laughs> I, I get a kick him on Ari there. Ariel is, a, is a, I think, a mermaid. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I think that's a, is that a mermaid? Okay, let's see. Do you have any more questions? Oh, uh, Rhonda. Hey, yeah, if there's, if there's, if there's time and no one I'm, else has a question, cause I've already gone. Go ahead. Okay, great, thank you. So um, I was, uh, and I'm back for the air, from the airport, I had to leave. So sorry, I, I took off and I, but I'm back, yay. Um, so I, I have three, basically I've got three meditation practices that I am learning um, off and on. And I'm a little uh, wondering which, which way is the best way for me to continue. The first one I was learning was Anahat. So I meditate in the morning and the evening. And um, so I was learning Anahat. The second one that I would do right after that is a practice that um, I am supposed to learn and teach to other people. And then just recently, um, I connected with a shaman and we did a third type of meditation um, that she showed me this is what I should be doing. So now I'm like, I'm not really sure um, our, which one or are any of these um and perhaps i'm supposed to combine something to to be able to teach this in the future anyway so that's kind of my question like which way do i go with these i'd, I'd say do all of them <laughs> do all, all three just, just all three just, ah, yeah okay do the one, you can do one at a time and pick the one you want or try all three at the same time. Depends how much time you've got. 
different meditations are good because if you do one, it can be quite boring at the times. If you do it every day and every day, so uh, different ones are great. I, I, mm. I've always done different ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, and I'm, I guess I'm, I'm more focused on the specific one that I'm supposed to teach to others because mm. that was the whole point of the second meditation. So now yeah. that's, yeah. So I don't know, am I supposed to be learning or incorporating the second and the third one or just do my thing? I, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I would get all the best parts of it and do it as yours your meditation interesting mm. okay. okay okay well that would that would make a lot of sense then mm. um so all right well wonderful okay. mm. now i've got a whole new practice <laughs> <laughs> perfect thank you philip i appreciate it you're welcome thank you uh deb at the end can i do my atlantis alo a grounding technique for you can do anything you want phil um mm. we have a question from dave mm. go ahead dave okay um i just wondered if there was any help on my stomach mm. the, um because of all the stuff that's happened to me this past week just the nerves and everything for some reason everything's blocked up in my stomach and i still haven't been able to fix it um so any kind of guidance or healing to help with that just all the food and everything i've had for a whole week is just staying in me needs to go uh the grounding technique i'm going to say in a five or ten minutes is also an healing self-healing which should be good for susan's face as well and uh it's one i i, I was shown on atlantis when i was a and I used to live there. So uh, that's one. The other thing is you've seen loads of different berries, where, like the tablet. Uh, I, I'd say grounding. I think you might have an energy blockage and you need to de-block this energy. It's in, in, uh, have you had this before? Um, just uh, uh, two times in the past 20 years. Mm. I, I, I think it, uh, I think an energy. Uh, your chakras. I like to do figure of eight chakras and visualization. Get the energy going. Use your hands to go through all these chakras in a figure of eight and make them just flow to the ground. Yeah, uh, I do. I do that sort of thing. Uh, figure eight, and what's the intention, or what am I thinking? Wait, wait, wait. When you see the chakras here. I go round and then an eight and then go round and eight and slowly round so the, the energy's flowing really well, yeah? And it gets to there and then j just do some, some uh, self-healing uh, on your on the actual chest uh, and try and push it down. Uh, if you've had it a few times, it, it could be obviously food. You can try the tablet method as well. Uh, anything else? But the ALO sh should be the best one, which I'll, I'll show in a minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Bobby uh, has another question. Hi. Um, I was just curious because um, I was talking about how I felt like I, you know, wanted to work with Alba previously, I was talking to you about that, Deb, um, about getting a message out. And um, she just actually announced to us um, privately, um, but now she's going to announce, but she's taking a little hiatus and taking some time off. But I really felt strongly pulled to her and she did help me with the frequency tuning and with a, a gathering session. Um, but I'm wondering, is there anyone else that I could possibly connect with to help me get my message out because I really feel strongly pulled in that direction. Um, and I think with the confirmations of what, um, and the, and the connections you guys are making helps me realize why that is. So is there anyone else that maybe, um, you would suggest to work with? In what way? Get your message out. Um, and maybe doing some, um, well, I know that Alba does her sessions differently for the um, 
um, the hypnotherapy. So I'm just wondering in that sense. Um, you mean he, what kind of, what kind of message are you trying to get out? Explain that to me. I don't know the message. I know it's in me. <laughs> I know it's in me um, because I've been strongly pulled to that. And I was like, I know I have to have a session, but I was thinking I was being guided to Elba. But then when the timing came up where she said, now I'm going to take a step back for a while and only do certain things, I thought, well, maybe I was only guided to her to be linked to someone else for that. And I was just didn't know if if you knew or anyone knew who else I could possibly work with. Why don't you work on your, first you need to work on yourself and get your, and find out what your mission is and what you should be doing. So one step at a time. You've got to find the message before you're the messenger. Yeah. <laughs> right. It, yeah. And that's, and that's something you can always reach out to me with because I do sessions similar to Elba. So, um, yeah. you know, feel free to, feel free to find me and, and um, contact me regarding that. Um, and sometimes people are directed to me just for that purpose is so that they can find out what their mission is and then start working toward what they're supposed to be doing. So um, yeah, happy to help. Well, I actually wrote your name down <laughs> earlier. I, for some reason, I already doodled it down for, so I was like, oh, I gotta, funny. Can I, yeah, it is. So but, but what hire, hire already connecting. <laughs> we, we what have happened? What happens when you open a door, more doors open. Exactly. Open the first one first. Mm. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. I'm being strongly pulled into doing this. Before I was offered a few years back to go into a, a hypnotherapy session. And I was like, the timing's not right. I, I'm not really comfortable with that. But um, over the past year and a half, I've been more pulled strongly into that direction. And I just hadn't taken that step. And of course it is difficult to get a session with Alba and the timing's always right. And I had that opportunity. And for some reason I chose the frequency tuning instead. And I thought, well, maybe I needed to do that. So my message could be clearer when it was time to give that. So I'm just putting my feelers out there. That's all I'm doing right now <laughs> to find yeah. out some connections. And, and my session and my sessions aren't hypnosis. They're more like listening to a guided meditation, but because I cleared blocks as Archangel Raziel, I use that power to melt away whatever the blocks are, and then we'll have a conversation with your higher self and other guides as they come through, and that's how you'll get your direction. Thank you. I think I know. I just, I think I need to have that concrete. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we, I've had a session with Wendy and I can highly recommend her. So okay. you know, definitely have a start there. So really, she's great. So have a go. Yeah. But in that, obviously, as I'm, as definitely with Wendy, but um, Jill Cole, but I think Jill is also having a, a, a break, isn't she? So um, yeah, on Wendy would be a great start. So. Yeah. Later, this month, later this month, we have a uh, group like this with um, Noah. So, I've been pulled to him too. <laughs> so we have, yeah, and, and that's really popular. There's a lot more people, um, you know, with Phil, and this is a holiday weekend. We would have had a lot more people here this, this, this day too, but a lot of uh, our Canadian friends are all celebrating their Thanksgiving. When I seen your flyer and I seen Phil's name, I'm like, I got to get into this session. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know why, but I gotta get into this session. So, and like I told you before, I'm new here. So, <laughs> we're gonna start our healing and uh, light language uh, once a month. We're gonna do one uh, for the U.S. and, and then one for uh, Australia once a month. Now we're gonna do that. We used to do it weekly. It's just too much. So we'll do that again, um, and that that'll keep us pretty busy in between our sessions. So yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. It just got to be too much once a week. I mean, yeah, once a week. It's just, it, it, they got to be too long, four hours, three hours. It's, it's there. That's a long time. So were there any other questions today? Okay. Phil, did you want to do your? Yeah, yeah just one point. If you, if you ever have any questions, just message me and I'll see if I can help. I, I know I'm good, but yeah. Most of us are all on Facebook, so. Mm. Yeah. This is a grounding technique from Atlantis. What you've got to do is close your eyes and like meditate. But what you do is you visualize a halo around your head. It's about this big. It is in white light, angelic white light. And what happens is it goes 
two, uh, two inches down, one inch up, two inches down, one inches up, and it's checking you out. It can get rid of that. Uh, uh, you got to do is by intent program it to check you out, and it might change color. You might see different colors. If it's red, it means there's attachment. It can also do green for Ely. So what you got to do is just close your eyes and uh, imagine this halo above your head and it goes to the ground. And when it goes to the ground, send in moonlight to clear, to clear the negativity of your body. So just close your eyes. You can see the halo above your head. It's bright white angelic light. It's shining on you. It's now going down, it's checking your body, it's going down, it might change color. You're not programming, it programs itself. It's now at your, uh, uh, it's now going past your head, now, now going, do, going past your purple chakra. It's now going to your throat chakra, and it's going two up, two down. You might feel very warm, uh, it's fine. It's going all the way down to your, chest uh, it keeps on going two inches one one inch down two inches down one inch up two inch down so it's cleansing it's it's giving you the ingredients to fix your body if you need fixing it's clearing any attachments any entities any negative uh, uh, parts that are still in your aura field it's now going to your root chakra two inches up one inch down goes past your legs it's got keeps on going two inches one inch down you can actually see it in your in your uh in your mind's eye it's now going to your knees it keeps on going two inches one inch down uh, two inches down one inch up and then it goes to your feet when it gets to your feet you then send moon energy into your crown chakra into your crown thing and it that pushes everything right down to the halo then it starts all the negativity are going to your uh going to the earth going to the earth and just one what i normally do is send the halo back up to your head and then right down again so it pushes everything down and cleanses you and you can do a prayer if that's your belief and uh that's it okay and then you can wake up Oh, is that okay? Did anyone feel anything there? Yeah. Yes, uh, the feeling of wooziness hitting to another dimensional plane and uh, the colors were changing as you were going. So it started out yellow, then green, then uh, bright magenta, and then it changed to, as you were kind of toward the hip stomach area, kind of a reddish and then it, quick change to bright yellow and green and then down toward the from the rest of the way down for the legs it was all uh violet a uh, violet purple so yeah lots of different activations and clearing going on apparently <laughs> mm. you, you can get downloads with this as well you actually can get downloads just by doing this which is quite a bit strange that's good anybody else see anything i had this little black thing in the middle of my back Interesting. Mm. I took it, removed it, and that I had my head was blue. My whole head aura was blue. I don't know what that meant. Mm. Blue. Uh, blue. That's like angelic. You've got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the aura. Yeah, the whole, my whole head was blue, and then my whole back, all down my back around that little black, mm. black thing, whatever was removed in the middle of my back was green energy mm. and all down into my, up, up down into my legs. The rest of the, rest of the way down was all white. Mm. Hey, I, I, you don't mind me telling a story about this halo. I've been using this for about 10, 15 years and I, I only thought it was white light, but an healer was healing me that had a demonic entity on it. <laughs> And I ended up getting loads and loads of attachments from this uh, entity. And when I did it, I thought, why has it gone all red? <laughs> I was panicking and it was actually removing, it was burning them out. It was actually burning, uh, it was all in the aura field. 
and it was burning them out. So I only thought it did white, but now I've been told the colour is the colour you need. So you need some blue dab. I had a orange uh, colour came through really bright orange at one point, towards the top somewhere, I don't remember where, but... Mm -hmm. bright orange, I think a bright orange is like emotions, actually. Bright orange. Oh. It's helping your emotions. What? Is that near your head part? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Is that where was it? Was it where your head is? Um, I think it was a little bit lower, maybe the chest area. Yeah, it might be uh, your heart chakra. Just needed a bit of fixing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. everywhere. I didn't think of colors for anywhere else. I just kept visualizing the, the place where it was mm. down and up and down and up. It felt really peaceful. It was really nice. I felt like all my muscles relaxed. <laughs> My whole spine relaxed. I'd recommend that every day, especially if you do a lot of healing and a lot of spiritual work. Every day? Hmm? Yeah, I'd, I'd do it at night just before you go to bed. Sounds good. If you, you pick anything up in the day, you, you can clear it out. The sacral chakra is related to orange as well. I, know. I, know. Mm. I was going to say that I actually felt um, that it was going to cleanse Dave's uh, issue that you were just talking about I don't, it, during that time. I mean, I felt just bright white light and it got grew more intense, but I felt a lot of heat. And then as it went down through my body, I can actually, I don't know why his issue connected into my image, but I felt it healing his problem that he was talking about. And it's mm -hmm. odd that you did say about the sacral or the orange, because it is sacral and that's kind of in that area that'll help cleanse and push that out. I know he's working, he's working on filling his sacral chakra with white magic. Oh yeah, that's the area. And so that, that might be, you know, no. helping him clear things, clear blockages in that area too. Mm. Yeah, it, it works as an healing as well as a grounding. So it's got like a double, uh, double whammy. It, it can do either, or it can do both actually. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Well, I felt the the cleansing and all the wonderful colours, but right at the very end, I felt my pineal gland um, vibrating. So I don't know if I've put um, cleared something there, or is that unusual? I'd say that's a grab. That could be a download. <laughs> it might okay. be a download, download okay. awakening, especially where it is, especially with yeah. the position. It was like it only came when I'd done that clearing. Yeah. So that was when the when the halo was complete. That's when I felt that jolt of there. I thought, oh, okay, mm. okay, thank that's you, good. thank you. Is there any more? Is that it now? <laughs> I could ask one more question. Yeah. Um, just as regarding the energy um, uh, that, that bends and stuff like that, when I'm outside, I would do a selfie and my background will be white out. It's not normal like other people's. Other people will have a selfie that will actually look like a selfie. But my background really just lights out and when I'm in door the light will also bend and get drawn to me and I will also get these moments of indoor as well so mm -hmm. one day if you have anything you can add to that could you repeat that a little bit please you just got a bad line up I will type it <laughs> That's the best way.
Yeah, silver light is angelic source light. So it's the angelic part of you that you can see. And it's, uh, you're probably giving it away. You, you're a bit like, uh, you're like shining. Uh, let's have a look anymore. It's blinding the light. Like, yeah. Literally, it light out. Um, you can't see the the house. I originally took a picture of my house, and I stood, you know, at the spot of the house. And then when I did a selfie, the entire light, the, the entire house is gone. It's just all silver and gold energy. The white silver, white and gold. Uh, I'd say that that's you. You're you're creating that. It's, it's your it's your gift in a way. You're very very powerful and very ancient. So I'd say it's all to do with you. Mm. It happens indoor as well. Lights get drawn towards me. The it doesn't matter what color light. And then when I do a selfie indoor, it's the same. You you know you will see all these all these lights like really blinding light. But have you tried have you tried changing the lights yourself? You mean the light bulb? Yeah, the no, the actual the, rays. Yeah, the the rays, have you tried changing it? Adjusting I, it I understand that I anchor the platinum and the master rays. Mm -hmm. So I have seen them. I when I when I call them in, I have seen them. Mm -hmm. And um, just like earlier, it was this red light, this rose gold, the seventh dimensional uh, ray came in because we're anchoring the 70 rays for a guy we're pushing her up to the next ascension level. So, um, you, I, you know, the, go on. yeah, I just don't, you, you I, know, the thing that you can see and then it disappeared, that's there to protect you. Yeah? because you beam in too much light, you, you are shining, you, you're bringing in the light and uh, anybody can else can see that probably. It's, it's your, it, you've got to try and lower it, but I wouldn't worry about it, to be honest. You've just got a very powerful gift. But, you know. Try using it if you can, the light. Try and use it for you. I do, I, I, I do grid clearing, uh, earth mm. clearing twice a week. Um, I know that from my experience, when I do a full blast around the road, to do healing, it shifts the, mm. the energy and then like people will feel it all over, the, all over. I will ask my friend, I just did this and they said, yeah, I just feel lighter and I felt a shift. So it's, I do use the light, but... Um, so send it to the crystalline earth, heal the earth. I do that sometimes. You do that? Yeah. So, twice so you're, a week. you're even learning what you do. You, you do it. Yeah, that's fine. I do it twice a week. Um, not exactly, because there's so many things I'm doing. It's like mm. on the conscious level, awake level, and also on the astral. So I'm, I'm aware of, I'm doing a lot of things. And it's actually mm. taking a lot of energy as well. Um, so in terms of my mission, it seems like I have a lot of responsibilities. I do believe that you're an ascended master, but I'm not sure who. I okay. have ascended already. Hmm. I have ascended. And, um, yeah. I just don't belong to any religious faction, although I believe in all of them. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. It's just really weird because in the old system, we need a teacher, we need gurus, and we need these groups. But I'm not taught that. I'm not taught that I need that. I, I know we don't need it. This is why, you know, we enlighten. We enlighten because we have to go into our own mastery and balance all our karma. And, you know, but I'm happy working with all the, uh, all the masters and the Amahamads and the Buddhas and, and all those. And whoever that comes in, and I just... I access your own past life. You've got a lot there of knowledge that you can just access. I have seen oh. some of it, and mm. I also know that a lot of the uh, a lot of the the past incarnations are not necessary here. So I refrain from 
from abusing and going in, dipping into the Akash too much. And, you know, because we, there are certain things I'm here, but I'm not supposed to, you know, dip either side to get too polarized. So I have to stay in the middle way. I get in trouble when I do dip by helping too much. I got in trouble uh, recently and they attacked me. And they don't like it when I do that. <laughs> but, but, you know, um, yeah, so it's, it's for me, it's more of a, at this stage of my journey, I just try to find people that I'm more connected with. We, and, we've, we've worked in past lives together yeah. a long time ago. So I'll just let you know that. Yeah, pretty sure. And I did yeah. mention to you that the angelics are, my, my soul soul ancient, the angelics that we work with in the source here, they're my mm. nephew, nephew and nieces. So I know I'm very ancient. Yeah. But you're looking good. You're looking good to the ancient. <laughs> I don't I don't know about the 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 looks, but um I don't feel old and I don't feel beaten up or anything like that. I have I feel very rejuvenated, refreshed. It's it's awesome because I'm you know, I'm fifty, but I don't look fifty. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, it's just like, I'm, I'm more concerned about anchoring because I'm a conduit here, I anchor the light. And so there's other things I do, but I'm more wanting to find people who, who share the same experiences I have. And then, uh, you know, that I'm not able to find anyone who has this unique experience like I have. So to me, it's, it's all still based on the knowing and trying to discover more, and it takes mm -hmm. time because I'm sure everyone here resonates with this because you may have all these questions and all these experiences and you don't know exactly what it is, but then it just comes and it may take you like two years before you understand get the answers, but you know it will come if it's needed. Well, what I've noticed when you open one door, so much comes through and you open other doors so it's like a backlog and uh, it's amazing when you open that test or that door when you open it it's not just the end it's more and then you come to another one and you got to open that one <laughs> yeah um. i have um i have um mm. seen a lot of things i have reached past the uh, the seven went into the void, you know, done a lot of things. And um, with these experiences, I, I want people to understand that they are not just here, just on base level. We're not just students growing or little children growing up here. We're all mature. We're all masters. And, you know, our souls are all masters and higher. Yeah. It's a matter of allowing ourselves to reconnect back to our soul and to access, bring in the soul's wisdom and raise your vibration high enough because we all can do this. And I've seen it from my own journey because I went from being um, just a little small little Christian, barely awake and not doing anything, and then suddenly I'm up with the dragons, the gold dragons, part of the gold dragon lineage. And Drag dragons have come in to everyone at the moment. Yes, and so so it's like you know. So this is not a joke. This is mm. not something that we should take lightly, because in my journey, I see a lot of people too scared, still hiding. If you know what I mean. For me, I just tell everybody I see in front of me, you know, on Zoom or anywhere. I am who I am, and I'm not afraid to speak. With people. My reality okay. is very different. I'm a, I just took a picture of the rose gold flame coming down and it's a you know, face that no one here saw it. But that's fine. That's what I see. Everyone. I see into the matrix. But the thing is that people are all clairvoyant and people have all these healing abilities, all these powers that they're not accessing or using. You don't have to use everything. But the whole point is that we can always grow this room for So much we can do if we just literally 
don't clutter ourselves because I find the biggest problem for all these blocks that we have are all clutter. It's stuff we hold on to, whether it's mental, emotional, or energetic blockages. And I, I get that. Yeah, and all, once all that is released and you're, you're able to not hold on to any baggage, everything opens up. You go flying high up there. The frequency just screams And, you know, I see a lot of people who are still stuck in the same area that they've been stuck in like years, you know what I mean? And, you know, they, they're just not growing. Mm. I, I quite agree, as, as well said. I, I do think that a lot of people carry hate and dislike to other people, and that creates the baggage and the problems so they can't awaken. And they've just got to let it all go. And uh, it'll all, it, they'll waking up that easy. Yeah, I get that. Balancing the Akash, forgiveness for this incarnation, all past trauma, mm. all past incarnations as well. And given that we are only allowed to access, you know, what's, what's needed to balance here. Mm. I, mean, I have a few hundred thousand karmic issues that I have to do. And uh, I can only do so many, you know, on I, this I, I released all my karma residue from all my lives about three months ago, and I had a week of an headache. It was all coming out. Mm -hmm. And because I, I said it wrong, I gave someone my, their permission to take it away from me and get rid of everything. But it was a very bad journey. And uh, uh, people who know me can see the change. And you've just got to get rid of all that karma. Yeah. And then the gifts that you've got are easier to access. And the more the frequency it's coming to earth at the moment, gives you the power to access them even more. Uh, so in a few months, I don't know what we'll be able to do. Really. Yeah, and you know, even though I'm quite advanced- Astral training, travel! <laughs> my journey, we can do that now. I, I'm still learning. There's so much to learn and so much to grow. And yeah. I, I can only visualize and see that every human on the planet, like in the future, will be nice and bright and shiny. Carrying we will, we will never happy. stop learning. We never, ever, ever will we stop learning. <laughs> I, mean, I see it for myself too, because every time I'm, I, I, I thought I learned everything already. I thought there's no more to learn here. This is why I've, I've ascended and I'm ready to, you know, to leave any moment. I'm done with mm -hmm. the, all my balancing of karmas. And so I figured, you know, why am I sent back here? I was sent, I left and came back. I literally did that. And um, so, you know, obviously, I have more to learn. I mean, I'm just telling everybody, be open. You know, you don't, don't, don't let the ego take over because I went through that phase. You know, the ego tells me, you, you know everything. You're a master. What do you need all this for? What do you need all these people for? Why do you need to, to study? And why do you need to do, well, you know what? You know, my ego was telling me that. When you have that ego block, the spiritual ego, you, you can get stuck right here and not go further up. If you want to, you can be stuck right here. And, you know, it's, it's, a matter of, it's a matter of seeing that ego and understanding and integrating it and realizing that you, you're not perfect. There's room to grow. And the more you suffer, the more experiences you have, the faster. So these times when you're suffering, it's chaotic. It's, an, it's actually a gift because you're being faster. I mean, you can have an easy, smooth life and not get anywhere on the spiritual level because you don't need to. Mm -hmm. so, well, you know, so, you know, you enjoy, not enjoy the suffering, but embrace it. Uh, I've also noticed, Victoria, if you've got any secrets from a childhood, if you find someone and tell them, you release the ownership of it, it goes, and that releases the clutter that you've created. Because uh, a lot of us carry our own demons because of, our, of what we, what's happened in this life and other lives. And once, they, once you declutter, you release it all. And your emotions become more, and everything becomes more and more sensitive, more spiritual, basically. Yeah. You got that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Right, that's is that it? It is, and I want to thank everybody for joining us today and sharing your beautiful energies with us. We will be back next month. Mm -hmm. And later on this month with Nilesh. And uh, I want to thank uh, Sophie for being my uh, right arm today. Thank you for lending her, Phil and Nilesh. <laughs> no problem. Oh, thanks. You're, you're great. She's a star. She Stop. is a star. She sure is. Um, she does all the flyers and beautiful posters that uh, uh, I post for these uh, sessions, these beautiful web webinars. And I want to thank everybody again. Um, contact us if you need anything. And we will see you next time. Much love. God bless. Thank you. Thank bless you. you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Have a lovely session. Bye. Bye. Thanks.